Hello, everybody. I hope that ticking is gone. I don't know where that ticking is coming from on that last video. I've always had trouble with this computer. I'm about ready to send it back to Finger Hut. <laughs> oh, well, anyway. Well, here's a little story. It's two o'clock in the morning. You're awakened by the sound of breaking glass. You race down the hallway with your gun drawn to find a stranger crawling through your bathroom window. If you shoot him, will you be criminally charged with assault or murder? Could the intruder sue you for wounding them? The answer depends on the state you live in and on your circumstances. So what legal protection might you have if you shoot an intruder? Well, that's a good question because it's kind of weird if you ask me. The prime legal protection you may have for shooting an intruder is called the Castle Doctrine. Castle, C-A-S-T-L-E, Doctrine. There's also another doctrine called Stand Your Ground. That may provide some protection depending on the state you live in. Both of these doctrines fall under the broader umbrella of self-defense. So is it illegal to shoot an intruder? The answer depends on whether you are acting in self-defense or whether any of these doctrines apply. These articles will address the elements that are needed to establish self-defense and more specifically, the Castle Doctrine and the Stand Your Ground Doctrine. Is it self-defense? if I shoot an intruder. The law gives everyone the right to defend themselves with a reasonable response. Self-defense is affirmative defense to a charge violent crime. This means that if someone is charged with murder or assault, self-defense can be a legal excuse for the conduct if they can prove it was reasonable response in a court of law. In order to use self-defense as a shield against a charge for a violent crime in most jurisdictions, you must not be the aggressor. So if you see somebody breaking into your home and you don't know who it is and the, you heard glass breaking, I mean, for heaven's sakes, you can't do anything about it? No? Only use enough force to combat the threat and no more. You can't bring a gun to a fist fight. Have a reasonable belief that force is necessary. Have a reasonable belief that an attack is intimate. intimate. And retreat if possible. So someone can break into your house probably got a knife or a gun, but you can't do anything about it until either he shoots you or stabs you. He's not supposed to be there in the first place. Just breaking in is enough, but you got to stand there until he really causes you harm. <clears throat> okay, let's go on down a little further. What's the difference between castle doctrine and self-defense? The castle doctrine stems from Old English common law that holds that your home is your castle and that you have a right to defend your castle. The doctrine is an offshoot of self-defense and eliminates the requirement to retreat. Most states have some variation of the castle doctrine in their laws. The prime difference between self-defense generally and the castle doctrine is that there's no duty to retreat and there's a pres presumption that deadly force was necessary. Well, somebody breaks into my home, I would say that's, that's enough right there, don't you? <laughs> Jeez. Typically, state laws can allow for the use of deadly physical force, and it's legally presumed to be justified if an intruder is in the process of unlawfully and forcefully entering a dwelling or residence. 
Now, some states even allow the use of deadly force if there's an unlawful, forceful entry into a business or occupied vehicle. Well, now that's, uh, that's better. That's getting better. However, not all states can um, co codify the Castle Doctrine. States like Vermont have justifiable, uh, justifiable homicide laws and then rely on the courts to determine if force was necessary to defend one's home. Hmm. General elements would allow protection by the Castle Doctrine are Number one, there was a forceful and unlawful entry into your home or business or occupied vehicle in some states. You were not the original aggressor. Number two. Number three, you were not engaged in criminal activity. And number four, you have a legal right to be where you are. There's a split among us, among, among the states as to whether or not deadly force can be used. The majority of states hold that any degree of physical force, including deadly force, can be used by the occupant to protect against an invader. But there's a strong minority of states, including West Virginia, that requires a reasonable belief that the intruder intended to inflict serious bodily harm. Duty to retreat or stand your ground. In many states, there's a duty to retreat to safety, if possible, before using force. However, in many other states, there are stand-your-ground laws that remove the duty to retreat and allow a person to claim self-defense, even if they've made no attempt to flee. However, even in stand-your-ground states, there is no license to attack without cause, and the rules vary on the ability to use lethal force. Stand your ground differs from the castle defense as it can be used in more places than just a person's home, business, or automobile. While the castle doctrine holds that there is no duty to retreat within one's home, the stand your ground doctrine eliminates the duty to retreat whenever you may feel threatened. Is it illegal, illegal to shoot the intruder where you live? Get answers from a lawyer. Self-defense, the Castle Doctrine and Stand Your Ground are powerful defenses that can prevent criminal charges or civil lawsuits from being filed, but not in all cases and not in all states. Even in the states that do allow these defenses, there can be circumstances that sometimes make it difficult to determine if these defenses apply. If you're facing criminal charges, you believe you acted in self-defense. It is your best interest to speak with an experienced criminal defense attorney to discuss your specific situation. And then you contact a qualified criminal lawyer to make sure your rights are protected. Well, a long time ago, I uh, heard and was told if, cry, if someone is breaking into your home, let's just say broken window, whatever, or kicking in the door, kitchen door, whatever, and he does get the entry to come in, before you do anything, make sure if you're going to gun him down, if he's got a gun, and you're scared, and you're in self-defense mode, he has to be half away in the house. Yes, he's got to be halfway in the house. So if he's coming through that door, that ain't good enough. He's got to be one foot inside the house. So when you shoot him, if he's got a gun or even a knife. You might be able to fight with a knife, but I wouldn't count on it. Because these days, people are stabbing people more actually than they're shooting them. But you got to be sure that they're halfway in the house. So if he's got one foot in, when you shoot him, make sure he's going to fall in, not fall out. Now that sounds weird, and I know it, because if you shoot somebody, you're standing in front of them, nine times out of ten, they should slide down. <laughs> you know, you think, well, they're going to get shot. They're going to slide down the wall or the doorway. 
but sometimes that don't happen. He could fall out backwards. If he falls out backwards, you've got a problem. In some states. Now, I don't know if they still go with that law or not. So, I just don't agree with these laws. If someone is kicking in my door and I have no way to protect myself, thank God for me, though, I, I can grab my babies and boost them out and say, run for your life. And hopefully they will because I'll, I'll try to hobble out and hobble for my life. <laughs> but uh, it's not funny. I mean, this is very, very serious because you can be held accountable for hurting someone trying to get in your house to hurt you. Oh, it, it don't make sense to me. Some of these laws are crazy, absolutely crazy. They need to be changed. If someone is rattling your door on the outside and you say, who is it? And they don't answer. Then you know, right then and there, they could be up to no good. Now they're getting mad. Now they're going to jam that door. Now they're going to kick that door. They're going to do anything they can do to get in your home. But you can't do nothing. You have to let them come in. They got a gun. They got a knife. God help you. You know, and if you don't have anything to protect yourself, you know, uh, stun guns are the best way to go. But in order for a stun gun to help you, he can shoot you first. You can't reach him with a stun gun. Stab you. You might be lucky there if you hit him right in the neck with that stun gun. Yeah, and don't let up. Because they're the proof that he's got the knife. He's probably even maybe stabbed you by now, so your blood is on the knife. But don't touch it. Don't touch no weapons whatsoever. No, don't leave your fingerprints anywhere. Unless you're grabbing, trying to protect him from stabbing you in the throat or heart, wherever. God only knows. This sounds horrible, doesn't it? You know, in the 50s, we used to leave our doors unlocked. We used to have old screen doors. Remember them old screen doors with the little hook? Hook latch, all you had to do was just maybe put that in. We never did that. We didn't have to worry about nothing. Friday night, the store stayed open on Main Street till 9 o'clock. You could go get your groceries, go shopping and stuff. Maybe go have a few beers with some friends, a couple drinks. You might come home and you're going to find somebody laying on the couch. And you're going to say, who in the hell is that? So you take a closer look and you say, oh, that's John. He's been down to the bar again and he's drunk as a louse. He missed his house. <laughs> you know? <laughs> see, it, cover him up or else see if you can get him up and get him back home again. Then were the 50s and the 60s and the 70s. You know, rock and roll music and everybody got along. Kids were happy. They got to go out and play. They didn't have to be scared. You know? Oh my God, how sad. The times we are living in now. And the police, they're quitting. They don't, they just can't take it. I mean, their families have been threatened. They have been threatened. They've been murdered by criminals. It's just, it's unbelievable. And our prices is going up and up and up. And I have a correction uh, that uh, artist, singing artist, let me get my book here a minute. I didn't get his name right, but it's pretty close anyway. But it is uh, James Taylor, and I put it on the video. I made a correction. Yeah, he was dancing around, I guess. Uh, to the music of uh, James Taylor. Just so proud and happy. Well, we're not proud and happy of the way our country has been ran down for almost two years now. Nobody can stop him. I don't understand that. 
He should have been kicked out of office a long time ago. And it's just going to keep going on and on and on. And if you saw my video, not the last one, but the one before that one, where they're finally, finally finding out all this hubbub against Trump was all lies. It was all rigged. It was all put up. I don't know about anything else right now. I'm going to keep looking and keep my head up, keep my eyes peeled, just in case. But now, they're paying to have Trump back in the race, the election race. Yeah, I don't know if I'm supposed to do this or not, but I admire Stephen Gardner. And that was his video of today. If you can, check it and go back. Yeah. And and listen to that. They're trying to trap Trump again. That's all I can come up with. And Stephen can't come up with anything else either. But there's, a, there's something going on. Yeah, now they're just... They're really hubbubbing up with Trump. Oh, Trump... He won't, I pray that he won't fall for it, and I don't think he will. He's a very smart, smart man. That's what I say. He's a businessman. You know, he, he's an organizer. He couldn't be where he is today with his businesses if he wasn't legal. You don't let a man go on for, how many years has he been a businessman? Common sense, for God's sakes. What's wrong with these people that fell for all this crap? But, as I always say, we'll see. There may be something that'll come up yet. Might be. But I do know for a fact now, if you watch that one video, that uh, I, I had posted, or not posted, but had read from the paper from the newscast. And... A lot of them are going to court now, and one whistleblower will be there. And he said all of that stuff against Trump was a lie. And he can prove it. It was all a put-up deal. How many of us kind of suspected that? Because Trump knows how to get things done. Our country was not in this shape when he was president. Whether you like him or you don't like him, it don't matter. Look at the facts. Look at the progress he made. And he was doing really well with everything, and he gets along with the presidents of other countries. Now, come on. Look at the facts. But if something should come up, we'll hear about it. We'll see about it, but right now, it looks like what I said, the rats are coming out of the woodwork. Oh well, God love you. I might do another video later on. I can't be sure. There's a lot, a lot of stuff I've got to look at. Yes, I'm going to do a lot of research. But God bless you. Stay safe. And what else can I say? Keep your doors locked. You know, and don't don't do anything to get yourself in a criminal situation trying to keep alive from another criminal. How else can I put it? God love you. Bye.